Once upon a time, Little Miss Gamer had a horrible, sucky, no good, craptastic day. When she woke up in the morning, she fell out of her loft bed onto her face. She ran to catch the subway, but it left without her. Oh man! She tried to buy some ice cream, but all they had left was hot dog flavor. Oh. Then it began to rain, and she didn't even have an umbrella. On her way home, she was chased by some crazed feral cats. And when she got home, she noticed Chad was playing the Halo. Crossing! Hey, Z. What? Can you take over for me for a second? Oh, really? What are you playing? Oh, Rocket Race. Oh, I've never played that one before. Hmm, let's see. I'm VIP. All right. Do I shoot somebody? Oh, 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 okay, get on. Um, get on, get on, get on! Oh, oh, stop yelling! All right, I'll get on. Get on the mongoose, get on the mongoose, get on the mongoose, push the button, push the button, push it, push it, push it! Push it. Oh, oh, God. Oh, push it. Oh, push it. Oh, push it. Oh, push it. You are the worst! I am not the worst! Yeah, you are! No, I'm not! Are you good at any game? Yes, I am. Name one! Name one game! I thought so. Uh, <laughs> Never in a million bazillion years would you be good at a game, you noob! I'm good at lots of games. Pull yourself together, Z. Believe in yourself. Uh, I'm good at... At what? I'm good at... What are you good at? I'm good at... Guitar Man! <laughs> Hey everyone, Little Miss Gamer here to talk to you guys this week about an awesome game called Guitar Man. It was released in February of 2002 for the PS2 by a company called Kwai or Kui. The game was critically acclaimed, but unfortunately it didn't sell well and remains to this day a cult classic. Face it, you'll never succeed. Not in a hundred million years. I will too succeed! With a storyline based purely on self-esteem, it's up to the main character, Yu Won, to save Planet Gitaru from the evil Gravillians. With rock! Yu Won, take the offensive! Roger! After learning the true history of his bloodline, whenever you want to face with an enemy, he has thrown his guitaru and is magically transformed into... Ah, it's a pretty classic rhythm game, with a slight twist in the use of the analog stick and the buttons. Gameplay is broken up into four stages. Charge, Attack, Guard, and Final. Following the rhythm in charge boosts your health meter, while missing notes in guard decreases it. In attack mode, you pummel your opponent with pure rock, and in final, you finish them off for good. If you run out of health at any point during the level, it's lights out, play again. Oh, you lose. Come on, man. What's up with that? Each level pits your guitar against a variety of musical styles, including jazz, J-pop, hard rock, metal, and more. With a random selection of different musical verses with their own distinct degrees of difficulty, each time you play is a slightly different experience. And in the later levels, sometimes it's hard just to survive. The game gets progressively harder with bizarre boss characters such as and my favorite, the Sandbone Trio. 
After each level, you get a ranking that's taken from how awesome you did, with S being the best for no misses. You also unlock backstory in the collection and cutscenes in the theater. Beating the game unlocks Master Mode, which is essentially the regular game on an unforgiving difficulty level. Every time you make a mistake, you lose large amounts of health. And if you've seen how insane some of these stages get, you'd understand why beating Master Mode is the stuff of legends. I know someone who got to Sanborn Trio on Master, but that's as far as anyone I know has ever gotten. You can also take on a friend in a split screen versus mode. For player one, it's a chance to show off your guitar skills from story mode, but player two has to master entirely new patterns as they follow the boss's rhythm. Up to four players can throw down here, but without the fun backgrounds from the main game. My only other gripe is that you can't play master mode tracks and verses. What were they thinking? One of the things that I really love about this game is that not only is it fun to play, it's also super fun to watch. The creators put a lot of wackiness into the backgrounds, and since most of the time you are so focused on playing the correct rhythm, you don't get to see it. By watching others play, it's like a whole new insight as to what is happening while you're kicking butt. I just finally realized that my music is not for fighting! Yeah, that's, that's right! In 2006, the game was ported to the PSP with a new title, Guitar Man Lives, with two new multiplayer songs. Other than that, it's pretty much the same game. In a time when Rock Band and Guitar Hero are all the rage, I like to look back on some of the earlier games that started it all. Parappa the Rapper, Space Channel 5, and Guitar Man with Guitar Man being one of the last games to use the controller, as opposed to an instrument straight peripheral. As for me, it was the first rhythm game that I ever played that, although challenging at times, I got the hang of pretty quickly. Before this, I had always found rhythm games to be extremely challenging, to a point where I would get so frustrated that it wasn't fun to play. Guitar Man started out in a place that was attainable and continued to up the stakes as the game went on, Beating the game felt like such an accomplishment, but also something I had worked towards, just like you won. All right, time for some viewer mail. Come on. <laughs> hey, so I was gonna try and learn to play the legendary theme from Guitar Man today, but I haven't actually played guitar in a really, really, really long time. In fact, I was never very good at guitar to begin with. And that's one of the reasons I really love Guitar Man is because I can kind of be good at guitar in the game and not necessarily in real life. But just like the game says, it's all about self-esteem. So maybe someday if I keep working at it, I will be able to play that theme in real life just as good as in the game. So, I think we're going to do some viewer mail. Hey little Miss Gamer. Being born at the end of the 80s, I really feel cheated out of so many classic games, like Star Tropics. Do I have the right to say that I feel like these games are a part of my childhood? What are your thoughts on the younger crowd trying to identify with the games of earlier generations? Sincerely, Chad Sobadash. Well, Chad. I would say that you could definitely say that these games were a part of your childhood if they were. Um, I mean, a lot of us grew up listening to music that was way before our time, but because our parents listened to it um, or other older people were had it on as we were growing up, we totally identify with having that be a part of our childhood, and I think the same goes for video games. If you played it when you were growing up, it's totally a part of your childhood, even if it wasn't new back then. And I think that you asked, what are our thoughts, my thoughts about the younger crowd trying to identify with these earlier games? I think that that's awesome because you should know where your, what your history is in terms of where these games came from. If you're really into video games, you should definitely check out what inspired the current video game creators to want to create the games that you're playing today. So I would say definitely keep checking out some of the retro games because it's so totally worth it. 
Hello, Little Miss Gamer. I would just like to say I really enjoyed your pinball documentary. So, when you were looking at Lovey's Pinball Museum, did you have a favorite machine? I quite like the Star Trek one. Great job, by the way. Girls and gaming. Yeah! Carrie Knish, Isle of Man. Aw, oh, thanks so much, Carrie. Doing that pinball episode was so, so much fun. It was like a dream come true to be able to play so many different kinds of pinball games from so many different generations. I think out of all the games that I played there that day, my favorite would be the Star Trek game. Just because there were so many different um, missions that you could go on, and I really liked the fact that you could shoot the ball in different directions on the uh, playing course. It was just so much fun to play that one. Um, and I had never seen that in any of the arcades that I'd been to before. Um, but thank you so much for watching. And I also wanted to pose a question to my audience out there. We did a review today of a rhythm game. And I was just wondering what your experiences were the very first time that you ever played a rhythm game. Did you find it extremely challenging? Was it something you really had to work at? Or was it something that you picked up right away? Do you enjoy rhythm games? Um, do you think that something like DDR is going to be around for a really long time? Have you ever played um, anything like Para Para? Is that a viable rhythm game? I would really love to know your thoughts on this. So if you guys have any thoughts about any of that stuff, if you could just shoot me an email here at littlemissgamer at pbcproductions.com, that would be great. Um, this is Little Miss Gamer saying keep playing. <laughs> Thanks.